today's show, I'm showing you how I took my side table lamps and turned them into elegant, blinging pieces of art. I'll also be showing you the results of what you guys decided about my headboard and my flowers. So stick around for that. But first, I want to take a moment to tell you about our sponsor and my favorite online creative learning place, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. There are so many classes and categories like illustration, photography, creative writing, filmmaking, the list goes on and on. These classes will not only fit your skill level, but will also always fit your schedule. This month's Skillshare highlights popular classes taught by Black artists whose work opens conversations, inspires creativity, and drives change. Like Christopher Rhodes. Now, I am all about low budget with a high quality look. That's why I love Christopher's new class, Video on a Budget, Prepare Your Shoot Without Breaking the Bank. No matter your budget or camera you're shooting with, Christopher's class will help you get amazing cinematic quality and show you how to create the effects you want, all on a shoestring budget. Ready to start hosting your own show? Well, check out Nakila Matthews O'Combs' class, Podcasting Secrets, How to Start Your Own Podcast. In this class, Nakila shares the secrets that helped her mass over a million dollars with her own podcast. She'll show you how to choose a hit topic, how to record, edit, and publish your episodes. Skillshare is the best, has no ads, and is also incredibly affordable. An annual premium membership is less than $10 a month. Plus, the first 1,000 of you to click on the link in the description tab below will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So for this Black History Month or whatever 2021 brings, you can decide to create something meaningful. All it takes is just a little inspiration. And who knows, you may be the next great history maker. Now, let's go make something beautiful. Okay, so last week I made this beautiful headboard and I'm really loving it. It feels so plush and luxurious in here. I love it, but I was just looking at my side table lamps and I was thinking about a lamp that I do have. I remembered I have this nice uh, silver lamp. It's really elegant and it has this mirror mosaic ball and I think it would go perfect in this room actually perfect with my silver sparkly pillow and everything else so i realized i had only have one of them can't find it anywhere can't find it online what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take my old lamps and change them into something that looks like that beautiful elegant lamp um so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge because I want to do a mirror mosaic uh, look on the lamp, just like the one that um, I have. And then I'll have two of them. So let's try that today, see how it works out. Hopefully it'll be beautiful. I already had pretty much everything I needed. For my lamp makeover, I'm using pieces of mirrors, diamond wrap, mosaic tile adhesive, pre-mixed white grout, silver metallic spray paint, a piece of light or sheer material, and small white lampshades. You will also need gloves, safety glasses, and a hammer. So I think what I'd like to do is create that mirror mosaic look down here and up here at the top on my two existing lamps. I also like to change the lamp to silver. Okay, so I had a few old mirrors from Dollar Tree and I'm separating the mirrors from the frames. These mirrors are great because they're pretty thin and they'll be easier to work with. So I'm gathering as many mirrors as I can to make sure I have enough to do a mirror mosaic effect on two mirrors. I turned the mirrors over and what I'm going to do is put some glue on the back. 
I'm using mosaic tile adhesive and I'm going to brush this on the back of each mirror. I want to make sure there's a pretty thick layer of glue on each and that it's covering every area of the mirror. Now the reason I put glue on the mirrors is so that I could attach material to the back of the mirror and I am gluing material on the back. I'm using a pretty sheer piece of material. You could use anything that's light and I'm doing this because of a method that I came up with for doing mirror mosaic pieces and you'll see how that works in a second. Now I'm using a big popsicle stick to um, sort of smooth the material on top and after I finish gluing the material down I'm going to put glue on top of that and brush that in because I really want to make sure this material is stuck to the back of the mirror. Now I allowed all this to dry for an hour or so and I'm just going to cut each piece out so that each mirror has a material backing. Now after you cut all the pieces out put on some gloves at this point to protect your hands and what we're going to do next is place each mirror one at a time inside a plastic baggie. I'm going to sit this on a hard surface, uh, preferably a piece of wood or something you don't mind beating up. And using a hammer, I'm starting mainly at the edge and I'm gently tapping to start cracking the mirror up. I also have that little stick, the little pallet underneath. That just helps to give me a bit of an angle and it helps to crack the mirror up a little bit easier. So I'm going around the edges first and then into the center area. And since I want my mosaic pieces to be pretty small, I'm really going in and tapping in between the cracks. You, know, you have to make sure you don't hit it too hard. You're going to have smash marks, which you won't be able to avoid, but uh, try to minimize the smash marks. So you have little cracks like this. Now before taking each piece out of the bag I'm using a big paintbrush to brush off the shards and any loose pieces that might be there. Oh and it is very important that you wear goggles because these little pieces could fly anywhere and you don't want them getting into your eyes. Okay, so now that I have all of these mirrors broken up, what I created with the material on the back is sort of a mosaic mirror tile sheet. And having this as a sheet, it makes the whole mirror mosaic flexible. I can cut into it. I could actually cut through the glass because it's very thin and it keeps all the pieces together. This way I can cut any shape I like and that allows me to wrap it around any section. Plus these tile sheets save me a little bit of time rather than having to pick up each individual piece to glue them down separately. So I am using a generous amount of that same mosaic tile adhesive to glue the sections down. And afterwards, wherever you have gaps, you can go back and find little pieces from the sheets to fill in the spaces. So I added the mirror tile completely around this big bulging section at the bottom. I also put it around the bottom rim. And I put it up at the top, just at the bottom section of that top protruding piece. Now I'm doing exactly the same with my other nightstand lamp and it'll be all ready to grout after it's dry. So on the lamp that I'm trying to emulate, they use black grout. But I already had a fair amount of white grout left over from another project, so I'm going to use this. I also find that the white grout works a little better with this method that I use with the tiles because with the black it'll be easier to see the lines where I glued the sections together. The white blends in a little more so you can't see those lines as well. So I taped up the cord. I'm putting this inside an old pail 
because it's going to get messy and I am using a wooden popsicle stick as a spatula to spread the grout all over the mosaic pieces. I am also using my fingers to work in the grout into the cracks and to smooth it out around the piece. I did switch to rubber gloves to make it easier to work with this wet material, but be very careful. You don't want to cut your fingers on sharp edges. After doing one half of this, I'm going to start wiping this down a little bit with a damp sponge. And I'm wiping it so that it's smooth around and I see just a thin layer of the grout over the towel pieces. Right now I also need to wipe some of that grout off of the base of the lamp uh, before it gets too hard because I need to paint the base. The grout begins to dry pretty fast so you want to do one half so that it looks like this with a, just a haze layer and then do the other half. Now after finishing that first coating and wipe on both sides then you're going to go back with a towel, a damp rag and really wipe the mirrors clean. The grout should be pretty hard now and you just really going to concentrate on cleaning up the individual pieces of the mirror. Then I'm going to go over it with a dry cloth, maybe even some Windex and really polish up the pieces. So it has a slightly different look than the lamp I was trying to imitate because of the white grout, but I like it. I think it will be more elegant and stand out more. So I know it doesn't look like it, but I actually cleaned the base of the lamp, made sure it was smooth and clear of the grout. Now before I spray paint this, I need to protect the mosaic mirror section. So I'm using tape and paper to cover those areas all the way around. Now I'm taking this outside in the garage and I'm going to spray paint it with a shiny metallic spray paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum Ultra Coat Silver Metallic Spray Paint and I'm spraying a nice even coat all the way around. And ooh, very nice. I am loving the mirror mosaic with that silver. Perfect little touches of sparkle. Now I also really love the white lampshade that was on my inspiration lamp. So only for this I had to go out and I did find a similar lampshade. It wasn't as long but it was still pretty and elegant and has that linen look. So these were just $10 and I found these at Target. This is very pretty as is, but I think I want to add just a little touch of bling to my lampshades. So I am going to cut a strip of diamond wrap and I am using some dots of hot glue to attach a row right at the bottom and at the top of the lampshade. So it looks like little tiny sparkly nail heads. And compared to the piece that I like, I think I was able to achieve that elegant formal look that I was striving for. Plus I have one for each nightstand and they look beautiful in my bedroom. Just the perfect amount of sparkle and elegance. Okay guys, last week I asked for your opinion on what I should do with my bedroom regarding my headboard. If I should extend it all the way out to the nightstands or if I should leave it the same. I also asked if I should change my cream and violet roses back to yellow or leave them the same. And you guys left comments and you overwhelmingly responded pretty much almost unanimously that I should, drum roll please. Ta-da! We extended the headboard and we are keeping the cream and violet roses. And I just love it. 
it looks so open and big and beautiful. It makes the whole room look grand and plush and luxurious. It feels like a new space and we both just love it. So thank you guys so much. You made a great decision. And you were right, I did not have enough material to create all of these tiles. So what I did was I did find a material that was similar in color. It did not have the same texture. So I decided to use the material I had, the old material, and extend out one row on each side. And then I used the new material as a border around the whole piece. So I extended out two panels on the side and one panel up at the top. So if you do see the difference between the two different materials, you will see it as a border. Also with my flowers, I had a couple of great suggestions that maybe I could use the yellow roses in the springtime, which I love that idea because it will make a really nice change for the room. So thank you guys so much for your opinion. It really turned out great. So until the next video, I will see you next time. Hey guys, check out my Etsy store. I just added new products from this show with free shipping. And for just a few dollars, you can get instant digital downloads of full color step-by-step -step instructions with templates for some of your favorite projects. And check out my Amazon page where you can pick up my multi-surface acrylic metallic paint back in stock with eight beautiful shimmering colors. You can mix millions of colors and create endless home beauty for indoor and outdoor projects. And while you're there, pick up my Book of Elegant Home Crafts Volume 1. With all your favorite projects together in one big beautiful colored step-by-step -step instruction book. On my Amazon page, you'll see all my favorite crafting tools and supplies used on this show. And you can add them all to your cart for the one-click fast and easy shopping and delivery convenience of Amazon. I'll be working every day to make crafting fun and easy for you. Follow me at Your House of Home and Your House of Home TV on all social media for extra home, food, and gardening tips.